Ah, Australia. A nation where everything's hostile, dangerous, venomous, poisonous, just all round dangerous. Plus, they have a really bad focus tree, so let's see what we can do with this country. At first, I considered doing a modded run, but I, I wanted to highlight just how terrible the Australian focus tree is. I think this dates from Together for Victory, and it was at the time... Eh. Not that great, and by comparison, it's it's totally garbage now. Like a quarter of the tree is locked behind world tension. Several very important focuses are locked behind being at war. So yeah, great. I can't invest in victory until we've gone to war. Overall, not my favorite focus tree. Today we'll try something else. Never another Gallipoli. Don't worry, it's not gonna be a fascism run. I have other plans, and those plans involve aircraft carriers. Yes. I know, I'm also gonna get destroyers. I know, it's gonna be so fun. Let's start out by building some stuff. A couple of the early destroyers, maybe? I need more ships, so a couple of extra destroyers won't be that bad. The navy as well, just exercise so I can get some navy experience. The army, I'm going to delete the army, mostly because I won't need it for a while, and then I can train a couple of fresh infantry divisions. Yes, not, not, it, it won't be all that many divisions. Fortunately, I'll be able to name all of these after my members. So, if you join the channel as a member, you too can join the ranks. The boys, the boys are here. Good. We'll need a lot of guns. We'll need support equipment. We'll need artillery. And I'm also going to start production of toad anti-air once we get the rest of this stuff somewhat produced. As for construction, mills, I guess. This country's so bad. What else could I possibly do? I could release these nations uh, as puppets, but I kind of want to wait until we flip the ideology so those nations also have that ideology. Now nah, we'll see. We'll see. Let's get cracking. So my goal as Australia today will be to just ruin everyone's day. I intend to be aggressive. I intend to... No, go away, UK. I tend to be non-conventional. Hopefully we'll be able to take out Japan because they are the obvious close threat. I would also like to take out the United Kingdom just to get back at them and maybe either Germany or the Soviets depending on which side of the coin we land on because I haven't really decided. I'm thinking we're going with empowered workers for a communism run mostly because we have no manpower. All of our manpower laws are locked behind focuses like the citizen militia forces or citizen military forces which means we have to take this focus before we can do anything and we can't take that focus until world tension goes up. So I'm thinking communism so we have some manpower. Never another Gallipoli. Great. Let's abandon the Westminster system. Gallipoli bad. I want to kill my own men. The British don't get to call those shots for me. Let's instead grab army organization expert. Just so we can get some taking army experience is my thinking. Make some more destroyers. Now the destroyers I'm going to be building here are going to be cheap. Ridiculously cheap destroyers because I really don't need these to be good. The sole purpose for these vessels is to be expendable fodder. That's really only it. Expendable fodder. So the first of the members has arrived and we have a couple of good generals. Let's go with Leslie Mooreshead and I'll do a field marshal in a bit. Probably Thomas Blamey. I right, got the better destroyers. I'm working on the aircraft carriers. Let's also make use of most of these bonuses because we will be leaving the allies at some point. I want to grab as many of the big, well, big of the bonuses they get me. I'm going to need better basic batteries or just batteries in general to improve my cruisers because heavy cruisers are still important to match with my aircraft carriers. I will need air. So this may seem weird, but I'm going to grab the bonuses for these air uh, things, just so I can make some carrier bombers. We'll need carrier naval bombers for my aircraft carriers. I know, I know, this seems very unconventional. I want to try something, okay? I don't always want to play the super optimal route and be the really good bitter steel. Sometimes I just want to try and have a little fun. And part of that fun today will be to build dockyards. We're gonna get some more dockyards. We're not gonna build early destroyers anymore because we can now build 1936 destroyers. Again, the cheap cheapest possible destroyers. I'm just gonna slap on torpedo launchers, the best engine, the cheapest gun. All they have to do is get in the way of enemy fire. That's it. For anyone wondering why I'm not accepting any of the lend lease the UK's trying to offer me is because if I accept their lend lease, my autonomy goes down and I need my autonomy to be over 550 to take the next focus. Empower the workers. Mathematically, it's just the free guns are good, but it delays the entire strategy. I'd rather not. All right. Still delayed. How much more do I need? 80 more. So much of this tree is just 
locked. Guess I'll just grab some industry. Carrier hulls. Okay, so I'm going to stop carrier research for now uh, or any of the naval research for now. Let's go grab some industry stuff. Basic machine tools. Yes, it's probably a waste of that bonus, but I need to start doing something to make my country not suck. Come on, autonomy. And there we go. We can now empower the workers. I have plenty of political power stocked up, so might as well use some of it for a bit of anti-fascist raids. That's going to be good for stability, obviously. And it just boosts communism even more. And now I can take the guns the UK is offering me because it no longer matters. All right, when we finish this one destroyer, I'm going to follow that up with a carrier. Now, the best carrier, in my honest experience, is to just slap as many hangers on there as possible. The best engine you can fit and nothing else. None of the other stuff really matters. Just smack on airplanes. Maybe you can slap on some anti-air, but I don't know, man. Might as well, I guess. Secondaries are pointless. Secondaries are just pointless. So let's make that and we'll produce one carrier for the main fleet. Also, the carrier fighters, not not useful at all. At least I think they're not. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I just slam it chock full of carry on, car carrier naval bombers, not not carrier suicide bombers, naval bombers, which reminds me I need to start making some of those. So I'm still researching aircraft stuff. Yeah, we got two research slots, baby. Oh, you're, you're thinking you can get research slots from the focus tree, right? Yes. Yes, I can. Let's see where they're hiding. There's a research slot here at the end of the tree that requires me to be at war. There's another research slot here also in that tree that requires a lot of world tension. So that's two research slots I can get. There's a third I can get here at the bottom of my uh, industrial tree, but I need to be at war to get it. So I can get another three slots and they're all in terrible places. Not fun. Again, I don't really know how the naval stuff, especially the, the naval air stuff works. In general, for airplanes, you want the best frame with the best guns or bombs and the best engines. But for naval bombers, they're just the same torpedo and you don't add anything to it. It's just those torpedoes. So does it matter if the engine's better? I don't know. Workers are empowered. Hurrah. That means we can hire the communist revolutionary. And we can start slowly flipping communist. Focus tree. We can't send a delegation to China yet. So up uh, back to the industry branch, I suppose. All right. We got the required support. Now we can send a delegation to China and commit to the cause. Like, this focus is just pointless. Yay. We send a delegation to China. Oh, paradox. This is such a bad tree. Now, now, when we commit to the cause, that means we will leave the allies. That's once, that's 70 days, that's another 70 days, and then join common turn, that's another 70 days. My suggestion is we stick to not doing this focus tree until we're at least communist. I'm gonna grab expand the RAAF just to get air experience, because without air experience, I can't even design an airplane. We're also gonna change the infantry unit we have. It was 22 with bit big for my taste. I'm going to remove two infantry battalions, bring them down to 18 width. That means I can have a couple more of these divisions and it, they just require less infantry equipment, which is great. There we go. Election. Oh, oh, I really thought that would just flip us. Not bad. I guess we're holding the national referendum. Not only does our leader look pretty terrible and he doesn't give any bonuses because why would he? Our flag is just absurd. It's the dumbest flag I've seen. And that's after seeing the Mexican one for their communist faction. We'll be out of the faction in a couple of days. Bada bing, bada boom. Great, we are now on our own. I'm going to justify, justify? No, wait. We're now gonna justify a war goal on the Dutch East Indies for West Papua. Doesn't matter which place you get. That is going to take us. How long is that going to take us? 225 days. So in 225 days, I want to at least do the focus join common turn. Let's ask for military access here as well. Might as well get a non aggression pact. That doesn't matter. I'm going to sail my navy over to Leningrad. And the army, I am also going to send right over to Leningrad. Let's also start production of carriers. I'll make better carriers when we get better stuff for now these guys will have to do cheapest cheapest bunch of stuff i can make they'll just have to do for now again i'd like to research more stuff i just only have the two slots oh i forgot i'm communist now that means i can now print men with ideological loyalty marx is just a giant like this portrait of marx is just a giant 3d printer i think i'm gonna use some of that navy experience to get flexible contracts that allows me to cheaply hire one of these two light ships not bad but i think i prefer the pacific one ah this just gives range and cheaper convoys 
Uh, light ship. Cockatoo docks and engineering. I think I'll go with that one. All right, justification is finished. The war goal should last until July. It's gonna be tight, but I think we'll be fine. Ideally, I just need these guys on naval invasion support in these regions. I can't reach the Eastern North Sea though, so I have to split off everything with range. So that's the heavy cruisers, the light cruiser, and then all of the destroyers that are at least level two. And split those into a separate fleet. So the, the small, terrible destroyers destroyers can't go anywhere. But then the second task force does barely have enough range to get to the Eastern North Sea. But it can't get there just yet because it's just out of operational range. But there's a trick to that, you see. If I take that fleet and sail it over to the Danish belts, they're now in the Danish belts, they still have their orders assigned. The regions are assigned, the order's just not active. I activate the order now for one small tick. All of them are green. And that's pretty much what I want to do to get my naval invasion going. Unfortunately, I cannot plan naval invasions from neutral territory. And I cannot join the faction, cannot join the common turn manually because of the distance modifier. So we'll have to see if this works. We're gonna plan individual naval invasions of the northern parts here, the top three provinces of the Netherlands. So 10 units, so 10 separate naval invasions from Leningrad into the Netherlands. So I'm having 10 units individually naval invade. The reason for that is now the planning only takes seven days instead of how many days it is. It is seven days per unit assigned to the naval invasion order. So it's a lot faster to have 10 different orders than it is to have one order with 10 units assigned to it. Cheesy? Maybe. It's just, I just, I, I don't care. Uh, let's also go towards citizen military forces so I can get some manpower. I'm also going to quickly give these guys engineers and support artillery so they have a little bit of a bite to them when they do land. I have about five days. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I have to, I have to, have to declare the war. The timing could have been better. Naval invasions are good to go. Navy can now, naval invasion support. Everything is green. I just need one tick and yep, they're off. <laughs> If it looks stupid and it works, it's not stupid. We're not going to call the Russians in for this. We don't need their help. So we're just going to kill the Dutch here. It's really not that difficult. Hopefully they don't intercept all of my ships, which they have. Look at how fine we are. Perfectly fine. Yeah, they're really easy to defeat too. So I really don't worry about this. Mostly because they probably funneled most of their army over to their colonial holdings because that is where the threat's coming from, at least to their eyes. Well, in reality, they really should have been looking at Europe. That's end of the line for the Dutch. Great. So a couple of things I want to do here. Obviously, I want the Dutch fleet and I want all the ships I can get from the Dutch East Indies. What else could I do here? I'm going to puppet things. I'm going to puppet the Dutch East Indies, even if it brings me into conflict with Japan, because I don't care. What do I do from here, though? I'm just going to puppet the Dutch and add everything I can. Just stack resource rights and war reparations on everything. All right, confirm and exit. And just like that, Australian Netherlands. Australia has several puppets now. What do we own? What do we control? We have the Netherlands. They have a good focus tree. They won't be well, reasonably strong and useful. We have the Dutch East, well, sorry, the Australian East Indies. They'll be very useful in terms of resources and uh, as a naval base to strike Japan from, should I want to, but I don't think we'll do that. We have Curaçao with their oil and we have Suriname with their aluminum or aluminium. Great. Off to a good start. Next step will be to take out Japan. To take out Japan, I will need more men. To get more men, I will need to do more research. So first off, I'm going to bring all of my boys over here to Vladivostok, along with the entirety of my navy. And we're going to sail these bad boys over to Vladivostok as well. At least we have something of a navy now. 37 surface vessels, an aircraft carrier. Yeah, baby. Five heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, 28 destroyers. It's not great, but it's a competent task force and then 20 submarines that are really not good for anything but eh they're here. can also perpetually exercise them because we have all of Curaçao's oil, which is great. Definitely great. Let's see. Once this destroyer finishes, I want to see if I can get a better or an extra cruiser out. Ideally, though, I'd like to slap some fire controls on the cruisers. Basic fire controls, not great. But yeah, I'll, I'll just lay down the design for the cruiser I want. It's not perfect, but again, I have no research slots. I'm going to pick the cheapest medium battery, and it's a heavy cruiser battery one. I'm going to put that on there. We're going to leave this front slot open. 
nothing in there. This one, we're going to add secondary batteries, the best secondary batteries we can. This slot you can either leave open or add airplane facilities so they have better spotting. Then anti-air, you could slap on AA or not. I'll leave it up to you. The best fire control you can fit, the best engine you can fit, and then another secondary battery. No armor. I At least I don't pick armor usually. The gimmick with these is they count as a heavy cruiser because they only have a heavy main battery. So they're a heavy cruiser, ergo they are a capital ship. But the most of their armament is secondary batteries, so light attack. The purpose of this ship is to one, draw enemy fire away from my aircraft carriers, two, to shred enemy smaller vessels with its secondary guns, and three, just provide naval superiority. The destroyers I have in my fleet are just fodder. All they have to do is stand there and die, and if they get the chance, fire off a torpedo. The real killing should be done by my aircraft carrier, more specifically those torpedo bombers who will then hopefully pick off the enemy once my heavy cruisers have sunk a couple of the enemy stuff hopefully at least we have some manpower now these divisions are ready let's add one more and then we have a full army of 24 ready to invade japan at some point so in light of my manpower predicament i've created a new template uh, it's essentially the same template i already have i just added on a little bit of artillery let me show you and it is comprised of of troops of the Dutch East Indies or the Australian East Indies. So it's this template, my preferred line unit, as you were, but I'm now using manpower that belongs to the Dutch East Indies. The Navy is as exercised as it's gonna be. So the heavy ships are going to go on naval invasion support while the submarines, I'm gonna put them on strike force. Now, ideally I would put the subs on convoy rating or convoy, yeah, convoy rating, but they'll just get picked off by the Japanese Navy and that will just weaken me just gonna do it like this this puts me somewhat in the green how much is this does this, this is 2000 friendly supremacy not great not terrible i hope to draw in some russian ships as well because i will be calling on my russian friends for this i'm going to justify a war goal on the japanese and now we wait oh germany is uh justifying against is gonna request all of these dutch troops put them under a general dumb as this may sound i'm also i'm already gonna get these guys ready to make uh, fortress fortress holland i don't trust the dutch to defend themselves all right justification is finished i'm going to declare the war i'm going to call my allies in i want the russians to distract the japanese on the mainland and i want the russians to commit every single boat and airplane they have to support my naval crossing yes it's gonna mean i will get less out of the peace deal i wasn't expecting to get a lot anyway since Japan racks up a massive war score with China anyway. But we'll see what we can get out of this. All right. I got my naval invasion going, but very unlikely that it will go anywhere. Nope, because of course the Japanese fleet is here. So now we wait until this naval invasion fires. I'm just going to be staring at this until the naval invasion fires. So mark the time, October 30th, 1939. I'm just going to fast forward until the point where the naval invasion goes off, if it ever does. Oh. We got a green tick December 25th. I think the key here was that I shifted my main fleet over to Strike Force. Now it's back to Naval Invasion Support. And I did start raiding with the submarines. So the submarines drew out portions of the Japanese Navy every now and then when they attacked some of their shipping. Then my main fleet came in, killed some destroyers every now and then or some cruiser, just damaged ships, sending them back to port. As a result, at some point, the Japanese decided we need to be not here. And now the Naval Invasion is off to a good start. Fortunately, though, Japan is really, really, really preoccupied and I can do whatever the hell I want on the continent uh, or on the main um, home islands. And I'm just going to go for it. I am just going to go for it. Nobody's home here. I like that. I, I can defeat nobody. I, I can do that. I am fairly confident that I can defeat nobody. Yeah, Japan's just not home. So this doesn't really feel like the glorious victory it, it, it is, but I'll take it. And there goes Japan. Like I said, I won't be able to get all that much out of this peace deal. I mainly want the Navy so I can then invade the UK. I was able to secure a couple of islands here. So the, the, the greater pop Hon Pei Union State is our puppet, but what I really came for was ships, and we did score quite a nice number of ships, two aircraft carriers, a nice number of battleships, so we have 
a very significant navy now. And we're going to ship that navy off to Europe because we have a next target. Our next target being the United Kingdom. We do have a very beefy China that we might beat up later, maybe. So we can give our communist brothers a boost. There's a Soviet Japan. That man's haircut. It's disgusting. Disgusting. I'm just gonna send everything and everyone over to Europe while I prepare for the final showdown. Well, second to last showdown. Can't really go anywhere anyway. France has to fall first. Oh, well, Germany does the thing. That's not a huge disaster. I have troops in position and I should be able to hold on to Fortress Holland with my divisions in place. I can still naval invade the UK with whatever spare troops I have. I'm not concerned. I'm also gonna pull the Soviets in because why not? Not gonna sign any non-aggression pacts though. I just hope the Soviets don't sign any stupid non-aggression pacts because then I can invade the UK and I'd very much like to kill the UK and the allies along with them before I have to fight the Axis. It would be easier to fight the Axis alongside the allies but then I'd have to kill the UK and France and I don't really want to do that you know it just I'm just gonna sit back and watch the fireworks really well if things are gonna be complicated I might as well just kill Germany first and then deal with the allies after along with some Soviet help I guess I really wasn't intending for that though I really wasn't <laughs> Soviets are losing shockingly hard, though I, do, I don't think it's gonna last. Germany is going to, well, they already are overextending by fighting everywhere all at once. So I'm thinking they should start uh, cracking under the pressure sooner rather than later. Let's see if we can get a naval invasion going here. Start tearing at Germany a little bit. Okay, I'm thinking I can probably take Kiel relatively quickly. Important thing here is I need to open the Kiel Canal so my troops can actually get in. That's important, very important. Looks like we might take Kiel. I also control the Kiel Canal, so when we take Kiel, I'll be able to funnel troops into it. That's good. Kiel is taken. Everyone to the front. Uh, this front line, everybody goes south. That's off to a good start. I'm pleased. Well, at least we'll take Denmark. It's better than not taking Denmark. I'm fairly confident we can hold the Germans pinned while they are... Well, super distracted. They haven't even managed to kill Yugoslavia. That's how distracted they are. It's 1940 and it's already looking... Well... Not looking good. German tanks and infantry destroyed. Perfect. So from here, I'll try to expand while exerting minimal strength. I, I just need to make sure that I don't actually overextend myself while I'm doing this. The goal is to hurt the Germans, not to hurt myself. The Australian army is already outside Berlin and I really don't see any meaningful... <laughs> meaningful opposition uh, materializing. So I'm just going to try and capture Berlin, make it quick and painful. Well, painless, painful. Eh, we'll screw with the Germans either way. So the Australian army has taken Berlin and a good slice of northern Germany. Hasn't even taken all that long. I know I'm just inching forward and it doesn't seem like a massive progress because it's already 1941. But keep in mind that I'm Australia. Everything has to come from halfway across the world, quite literally. And I've already gotten the this far. I own Berlin, Hamburg, most if not all of Denmark, so please take that into account when you judge me. Looks like we've linked up with the Soviets. Yay. So I think I could just let my order run. Germany will... Oh, my... <laughs> One of my flanks is getting suspiciously thin. I, I'm, I have a distinct feeling that the UK pulled a lot of forces away from this area. I don't want the UK to crumble because if the UK crumbles, that's bad for business, my business. I'll admit that this is incredibly satisfying as small, admittedly terrible Australia. Like this is not a good focus tree. This is not a good country with very little resources, but then making it work, making it work is just so much more rewarding. There goes Germany. Look at that. The Australian People's Republic controls almost all of it. And now our forces move down to the last enemy. We're gonna try... Well, we're not gonna try. We're simply going to kill... Italy. I don't think Italy is going to be much of a threat. So let's hurry on down there and kill the Italians. Shouldn't be too difficult considering it's it's Italy we're up against. So we're, we're overrunning them pretty quickly. Other borders don't matter. These are all minor nations. They're all going to die as soon as Italy falls and the Soviets are just plowing through. Absolute chads. Oh, there goes Benito. Let's just overrun the rest of Italy real quick. There we go. That was real quick. And I think with that, everybody... Greater Hungary. Really? There. Peace deal. Now, I don't want much from this peace deal because most of the territory are just far away from us. It doesn't matter. What I do like is ships. 
And I'm going to start getting a couple of ships out of this. The biggest, baddest ones. Okay, so that is a disgusting, absolutely hideous peace steel. Look at that. The beautiful common turn. Pretty big Chinese United Fund as well, but beautiful common turn. Ah, love it. And I can start my own preparations to naval invade the UK. It, it will be fast and it will hurt. And there's two ways to trigger that war. Either I demand New Zealand becomes my puppet or I just demand New Zealand uh, through which I supposedly annex them. Don't know which is the better option, really. Uh, New Zealand puppets, easy. Demand New Zealand's a little more aggressive. Let's give that a try, see what happens. Ah, New Zealand refuses our offer. Perfect, that gives me a war goal. Meanwhile, I'm gonna hit New Zealand puppets, <laughs> see, see what that does. But I do have an available war goal. I can quickly and efficiently declare war here. That should draw the UK in, or I can just declare war straight up on the UK. Everything is in position. Naval invasions are ready to go. The Navy is deployed. I have whatever air I have up over the skies of the channel. Maybe I should get a little bit more up over the skies of the channel. Everybody air superiority there. Get a couple of casts out. So yeah, I've, I've been making carrier versions of all these airplanes because reasons. But yeah, let's declare war and see what we can do. So I'm not going to call my puppets in. I'm going to declare war. Take out the UK, hopefully. Redirect my forces to then force a landing of France. And the French should fall because they still have this jointed government, so they should fall really quickly. Fingers crossed here that I don't screw everything up. Okay, so we have ports. Everybody get across. All of the aerial assets are now diverted here. Make the magic happen. Kill the UK. All right, so London is encircled. Kill it off and then advance. Initial contact, excellent. As long as nobody now naval invades the Australian People's Republic itself, because I, again, no defenses in place whatsoever. There's nobody home and I'm at war with the world. Not gonna call the Soviets in because I don't need them. Annoyingly, there's French troops pouring in now as well, so I need to hurry up and end this. But every soldier, French soldier that dies here is a French soldier I don't have to fight on the mainland. I still haven't called my friends in. I probably, maybe should, just to make sure I don't get naval invaded to the rear, but I've got time. All right, that cleans up the UK. Now for naval invasions of France. I wanna do this quickly and effectively, so I wanna hit them in as many positions as I could and as quickly as possible. So three per invade, oh God. Three of these guys per naval invasion, I'm thinking. The remaining 19 divisions over to Dover for reinforcements. Still don't need any friends. I still don't need any friends. It's just France and Poland and I can knock out the French relatively quickly. All right, naval invasion is off. Can I make landfall? Yes, sort of. Okay, everybody get going. Thunder across now. All we need is Paris and the Northern Victory Points and that is the end of France. So we're already in Paris. How much more for France to fall over and die? <laughs> Nothing. That was it. France can now fall over and die. I'm thinking I'm going to call the Soviet to arms now so they can kill Poland for me. There we go. With the death of Poland, that marks the end of this campaign. We're quickly going to take what we came here for. New Zealand actually just... All of the islands surrounding us and, of course, the great and glorious Royal Navy. I'd say this has been a very exciting campaign. But first, of course, a peace deal. And with that disgusting peace deal, we can bring the campaign to an end. The war is over. The common turn dominate the world and Australia hasn't really gotten any bigger. It's just Australia. But... But we control Great Britain for one, which is hilarious. The Socialist Republic of Great Britain. Oh yeah. And uh, Canada. Um, just about all of the former holdings of our colonial overlords. So we've done well for ourselves. Not just that, of course, I am a sucker for the Navy. So yeah, pretty, pretty massive Navy. I've gotten myself. This is all of the English and French ships. Australian France up there, the French commune down there, Germany cut in half for some obscure reason. I don't even want to know what the Soviet line of thinking in all of these wars is. It's just incredibly funny and there is no way this could ever lead to any sort of problem. These borders are just fine. Also, the French commune isn't even in the common turn. Why not? What is this? I don't even care anymore. I think we're done here and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please never play Australia. This is a terrible country with a terrible focus tree and I will never touch this country again. See you guys in another video.